Well, I'll be damned. My God, look at what happened over the past five trading days. Are you kidding me? Yeah, from 88.91 to 196. Suck it. Who got margin called? Damn, and the Tindy Man come? I hope everybody got to visit from the Tindy Man. Last Friday, GameStop changed their Twitter bio to just a period. The period is the end of a sentence. This could be a clear message that the end game is upon us. Mm, maybe, maybe not. This was Friday, as it kept going up. On the same day, Bed Bath Beyond announced a cooperation agreement with Ryan Cohen, who you previously remember, they wouldn't even talk to him. Uh, March 25th, 2022, Bed Bath Beyond today has announced an interview a cooperation agreement with Ryan Cohen, RC Ventures. Uh, it took him a while. As part of the agreement, three of RC Ventures director designees, Marjorie Bowen, Shelley Lombard, and Ben Rosenwig, Rosenzwig, will immediately join Bed Bath Beyond's board of directors, the board, as new independent directors. They will also stand for election. The board will temporarily expand to 14 members before reverting to the 11 members following the annual meeting. Cha-ching. Bed Bath & Beyond today announced that Mr. Bowen, Miss Bowen, and Mr. Rosenwig, Rosenzweig will join a four-member strategy committee focused on exploring alternatives to unblock blah, blah, blah. So Director Sue Gov, an accomplished retail executive and experienced public director, will serve as chair of strategy committee and independent director Andrea Weiss, founding partner of Alliance LLC. Fuck these guys. Oh, my God. Mr. Cohen concluded, The resolution announced today represents a positive outcome for all Bed Bath Beyond shareholders. Yes, it really does, too. As you'll see as we get into this shit. I appreciate that management and the board were willing to promptly embrace our ideas. Look forward to supporting them in the year ahead. This is a fucking slap in the face to all these pieces of shit, too, honestly. GameStop, uh, shortable short rate, 31.06%. As it just kept climbing last week. BCG has tweeted every single day, including weekends, since 3-7. 140 plus tweets. It's now been 24 hours since their tweet went radio silent. Yeah. Was it something we said? Couldn't agree more. GameStop is greater than Amazon. Yup. Fuck Amazon. And you'll see why. BCG wrote the TAP deal, one of the most scandalous business deals in Portugal's recent history. Uh, long story short, BCG was the ones creating the plan to restructure TAP, the Portuguese flagship airline, in which Portuguese citizens are expected to spend that amount, okay? TAP has historically been a struggling company, national company. A few years ago, it was privatized. Airline companies were hit bad with lockdowns, as we all know. Now, who wrote the plan? That, by the way, is not known by the public for a company that has close to zero chance of being kept afloat, but in the meantime, costs Portuguese citizens tens of millions. Your very own Boston Consulting Group. God, I hate these guys after reading about them, and you will too. In the comments, it says, this one says BCG inflated the company's assets and then sets them up for bankruptcy. Cool. Isn't that what we saw happening with management company that ran the ski resort, etc., that Adam Aaron was CEO of? Sounds like it to me. Yup, Vell Resorts. I don't know if Adam Aaron's such a great guy, and you'll see more. Boston Consulting Group, another one. And other consulting firms implicated in Angola corruption scandal. They helped label Isabel Dos Santos, daughter of the former president of Angola, become a billionaire allegedly by plundering state coffers. That is a lot to say. Uh, on the off exchange, also known as dark pools, GameStop shares 51.14% off exchange. Huh? Why so much off exchange? Why almost four times the amount of the rest of it? The shorts shit. Look how high it is, the fee, to fucking borrow some shares for this shit. It's outrageous at this point. On Friday, 28,295 contracts expired in the money. That's 2.8 million shares that will be delivered in T plus three, as you know, from, you know, all this shit we've gone through. Here's Lisa Bragg Anka with a tasty roast of BCG and a shout out for our man Deep Value. BCG got paid to fix fee, but not the success fee it claims it should have gotten. This is based on Matt Levine, who is a reliable source. I love Levine's conclusion, and the success fee should go to The Roaring Kitty, also known as user deep fucking value. Uh, also, we haven't heard from in a long time because, well, that's a whole other video in itself. DFE knew about BCG and tried to tell us. Interesting. Looking back on the 14th of June last year, DFE posted this tweet. An odd conversational naming several companies without any real connection. JetBlue, Carnival Cruises, GameStop, and Apple. What do these companies have in common? BCG. <laughs> Here's uh, like people from JetBlue. Prior to learning JetBlue Travel Products in 2008, Andres, a partner, managing director, Boston Consulting Group. Yeah, fuck you, Andres. Carnival, looking at Carnival, he found several insiders, found this gentleman, which is quite the reputation. Before joining Carnival, he spent 10 years at BCG and three years at Enron. 
Oh, and Enron, dude. This is more recent hire to Carnival coming from BCG. This just shows that BCG has continued their operations within Carnival, appointing Marjorie Fitzgerald to lead the Australian department starting January 1st, 2022. And there she is. GameStop, Jim Bell, who was let go with a $30 million severance package as soon as RC came on board. Ironically, the same amount BCG is seeking from GameStop. <laughs> I'm yet to find any tangible leads to Apple. Wanted to put out this in case anyone else can find a solid lead. Yeah. The Super Stonk Weekly Digest. Let's just blast through this real quick. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday, fifth green close in a row. Monday, borrow fees continue to rise. Tuesday, RC buys 100,000 bricks last week. Tuesday, borrow fee continues to go brrr. Wednesday, beta NFT marketplace launch. Wednesday, Immutable X update, second AMA. Thursday, RC tweets, overpriced BCG fight. BCG managed to piss off Reddit. Friday, BBBY launches, BBBY reaches agreement with RC. Friday, longest green streak since 2017. Weekly DD roundup, links in the comment. GME at 100% utilization all week again. Who else has BCG advised? Tours R Us, Blockbuster, Sears, Bed Bath Beyond. Watch it. Angela, corruption scandal, TAP, German military. God, right? These pieces of shit just keep fucking. Can we pause and think about extreme assertivity or what's possibly happening? I really do feel like I'm taking crazy pills lately. And my friends tell me I'm fucking crazy and that I'm like, and they don't think I'm serious yet about this investment. What Did it seem like I was serious when I was buying it at $4? Did it seem like I was serious when I was buying it at $13? What about 30 What about when I kept buying it at $60? What about 90 and 150 This is not a fucking joke to me. These people fucked our parents. In 2000, 1999, they also fucked him again in 2008, and we watched this happen, and now we are fucking back. So fuck you, dude. This is not a fucking game. This is not a joke. And look, fuck BCG, dude. These people bankrupted JCPenney and Neiman Marcus, and they just... I'm going to go through this, okay? This is from um, user... Fuck, I don't even have his name up there, but bro, thank you for finding this. And here comes all the people related to BCG. There is a lot to unpack here. But just know that they were responsible for J.C. Penney's and Neiman Marcus. Okay? Katie Mullen, in charge of Neiman Marcus, take down and blew it up. Simon Property Group and Brookfield Asset Management bought out the remnants of J.C. Penney. We're handed it by the Judge Jones, as I see it. Just one Tard's opinion. We've also had several apes on here writing about connections of Amazon to Time Property Group and others. Insider Monkey says Citadel had 68 million long position in JC Pennies. So he gets on with this for a long time. This is very detailed. You should go read all of this shit that I'm showing you right now. But basically, he's saying that Citadel took a giant long position so that they can make synthetic shares to sell everybody else, take profits on that. Not crazy to think about at this point, but back then, we wouldn't have known any of this shit. And he mentions Bill Ackman, who I've kind of been against for a long time. Just be, And basically, his most recent tweet about the fucking war seemed so forced and weird. And, man, anybody who's a short seller, dude, uh, to you. If you short sell for a living, go fuck yourself. Because we've kind of figured out what the hell you're doing. Since Citadel is was handling 40% of the trades, how many naked shorts might have been created for JCPenney, right? By the way, JCPenney pensions are managed by Athene, who is either mostly or wholly owned by dum -da -dum -dum -dum, Apollo Global Management. And if you see my older videos by Dilk Mud, you know Apollo. the Apollo series is deep and long, and this stuff is so crazy and should make you piss the fuck off. COVID simply provided the perfect cover for so many companies to say, oh my gosh, we can't do it anymore, while they pay talent retention bonuses to top brass, but furloughed thousands of others. This is disgusting and also true. Look it up. So the Netherlands has this tax scandal going on for years where people were marked as fraudsters with childcare allowances. Some are still fighting to be able to see their children again. Guess who was involved in the research? None other than dun, 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 Boston Consulting Groups. And this is in German, so I can't read the rest of it, but yeah. Never forget that one of the earliest employees at Bain Capital, arguably the most famous corporate writer in history whose actions achieved iconic status thanks to Gordon Gecko and the founder of the form of financial piracy known as leveraged buyouts, LBOs, started his career at BCG. Of course. This is where they all learned how to do this corrupt shit. They, should all, they all belong in jail, but nobody will go to jail. Like, no one. Jon Stewart warned everyone about Mitt and Bain when he was still on The Daily Show. Mitt is trash. 
what's a bust out? Okay, this is from Jumpster eighty one. This and this is where he breaks down how this shit works. Right, a bust out. In a bust-out scheme, the identity and credit line of business are used to obtain loans and goods with no intention of repayment. In some instances, businesses are created for the sole purpose, and others, legitimate businesses are acquired and then used for the fraud. This post, he'll go over what he believes is a scheme set up by Amazon to capture and kill companies for market share. The scheme involves Amazon identifying a target with the help of its game members to loan bank capital. It busts out the target using the capture and kill other competitors in the process. Amazon has been known for capturing market share of just about every sector, okay? And it's known that they wanted to get into gaming. They just sold books, but Bezos wasn't actually interested in just books. He wanted to create a company that was so big and so dependent on retailers that retailers were actually dependent on it. Well, in the early 2000s, around the time Amazon was just becoming known for selling a little more than just books, it also sold toys for Toys R Us and had a few other things on the site. Amazon wanted to branch out further. Amazon simply acquired the competition. Some notable acquisitions include Quidzy and Zappos. Quidzy was an awesome adversary that had domains, successful businesses such as diapers.com, yoyo.com, and wag.com. Acquisition of this company cost Amazon $545 million in 2010. Not cheap, but it was easier, and likely cheaper than taking on their competitors, competitors head-on. Diapers.com used robots, the same ones that Amazon used. Yoyo.com was a toy company. Especially after Toys R Us nuked the deal with Amazon, these they had to acquire this company. Wag.com is a super interesting company. Here, Wag was is a pet goods supplier. Do you know any online pet goods suppliers? Chewy. Zappos. Zappos was acquired for $1.2 billion. Again, not cheap. And to add further insult to injury, Amazon couldn't kill Zappos because had a deal with the CEO of Zappos to be left in place and allowed it to operate independently. Take a look for yourself. Well, fuck. If that didn't piss off Bezos, acquisitions are effective ways to capture businesses and get their market share. The advantage was multifold. You get a new business, a group, new group of customers, and you take on some of the competition. While this process can be quick and be very, very expensive. So let's take a look at Bain Capital. Bain Capital was started and run by a little-known figure, Mitt Romney. Have you heard of him? If you haven't, here's an excerpt from an article written by the Rolling Stone. It goes into us. He's a turnaround specialist. But Mitt Romney is one of the greatest and most irresponsible debt creators of all time. In the past few decades, in fact, Romney has piled more debt onto more unsuspecting companies, written more gigantic checks than that other people have to cover than perhaps all but a handful of people on the planet Earth. Instead of building new companies from the ground up, we took out massive bank loans and used them to acquire existing firms, liquidating every asset in sight and leaving the target companies holding the fucking bag. Mitt, he liked to make money, and he soon discovered a new way to make it. A quicker way, too. Bain Capital would acquire failing businesses, then bust them out. In fact, Bain would use the business itself as a collateral for the loan to buy the business. Yeah, use the business's own credit to buy the business. This is known as a leveraged buyout, LBO, as said before. Once Bain Capital had control of the business, often they would install their own board members as executives. Then they would distribute massive bonuses to these executives that the failing business could not afford. And sometimes Bain would use the business's credit to purchase competitors, as they did with Toys R Us and FAO Schwartz. But we will get into that in a bit. Here's an example. Bain Capital acquired KB Toys in 2002 through a leveraged buyout under the guise of turning the company around. But this was just front for the real intentions. You guessed it, a bust out. As soon as Bain had control of the company, they issued a massive bonuses to executives, bleeding the company out of its cash. This went on until business declared bankruptcy. KB Toys filed Chapter 11 in 2004, two years after Bain came in, to turn around KB Toys. In February, in February of 2005, KB Toys creditors, including Hasbro and Lego, accused the company's top executives and majority shareholders of improperly providing themselves with multi-million dollar payments to prior to the bankruptcy when Bain took over so that now, now we move into Toys R Us very soon after the lessons learned Bain lost control of KB Toys during the bankruptcy proceedings in August 2005 but the damage was done and Bain walked away with some money and some lessons learned very soon after the lessons learned from KB Toys Bain went on to Toys R Us with KKR if you've seen Guardians at the Gate you know who KKR is and, v and Vornado Capital in 2005 by means of LBO, Leverage Buyout. This time with a sharper knowledge of how to bust out a company and maybe help its newly acquired friends. When Bain took over, TRU had a debt of $1.86 billion, but for a company of Toys R Us size, that was not unusual. Immediately after the Bain acquisition, that debt ballooned to $5 billion, requiring 97% of the Toys R Us profits to service the interest on that debt. Good job, Bain Capital. Glad we put you in charge. Debt made the company. With $11.2 billion in sales, less nimble and also less able to navigate the business and finance world. While Bain controlled the Toys R Us, controlled Toys R Us, 
Toys R Us acquisition acquired FAO Schwartz in 2006. They also bought Amazon's main comp competition in toys e-commerce sector, eToys.com and Toys.com, along with a few other. When TRU was fully busted out and tapped out for cash and usefulness was liquidated, its parts sold off. So who benefits the most from this? Retailers such as Walmart, Target, and of course, Amazon. Papa's got a brand new bag. This is where I believe Amazon discovered a new, cheaper, and far more effective way to kill its competition. Up until this point, Amazon had been buying up and swallowing their competition. This was effective, but very expensive. What if? Hear them out. Amazon could use a company like Bank Capital to do a takeover of the company that had a massive market share that Amazon would like to capture, then have Bank Capital bust out the company, using said company to buy up any and all competitors, both online and traditional retail, then declare the company bankrupt, taking down all the competition with it. Oh, but there's a problem. How do you get bank capital to take over a publicly traded company? Hostile takeover? Sure, but that would be expensive. Buying all the stocks at the money would not be only costly, but make backfire potentially if shareholders refuse to sell. Short squeeze. Well, what if you could lower the share price in some way that made it possible to take over the company? How could this be done? As we all know, short selling isn't on its own, can't really affect the price of a share, but it benefits when the share price declines. Well, what if you're not truly interested in shorting a company to make money off its price? There must be a way to lower a company's share price by increasing the supply of shares on the market. Share dilution? Yeah. Amazon and Bain Capital are not capable of diluting shares of any company they do not control. So how could they do this? to the competition they need a partner someone who has easy access to share printing machine but who do we know that has access to one of these citadel darn citadel can create and sell fake shares driving the sell price the share price of a targeted company to the point of either being delisted or bankrupt or both when this happens citadel keeps all the money it makes from the short sale never having to cover the shorts i think by now you all understand how this works the gang members the usual suspects here we got amazon the leader citadel the dealer bank capital the butcher and washington post and motley fool the liars <clears throat> been saying it for a while fuck those companies here's the plan identify a target the leader Install and acquire an inside man on the board of the company, maybe a CEO or CFO. Spread rumors about the target through the media, the liars. Four, create a class action lawsuit against the company. Five, fire out the printers and flood the market with fake shares of the company, driving the share price to the floor, the dealer, Citadel. The company either declares bankruptcy or is delisted from the exchange, perform a leverage buyout of the company, bust it out, acquire other competition to capture and kill. And then when the company is so saddled with debt it can no longer stand, kill the competition kill the company, and let the wolves feed off the carcass, the butcher. Job done. Amazon kills its competition, bank capital makes a pile while busting out the company, and Citadel keeps all the money it made selling fake shares. It's perfect foolproof plan until it's not, because enter GameStop and the apes. Uh-oh, you know the rest of the story. Seems to me the only band member who's going to come out of this unscathed is Bank Capital. They get to slip through the back door, leaving the rest of the band holding the bag. What's this guy's conclusion? He thinks Citadel is just part of the machine. He believes massive companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, and others have been using this scheme since financial crisis of 2008 to capture and kill the competition. I believe there are many moving parts in this. And Citadel Kenny is just a foot soldier, not the mastermind. There may be a bigger Bowser at the end of this world than expected. As a side note, as we talked earlier this week about Adam Aaron and his connection to Shill Hedge Funds, I think this guy got stuck between two worlds. He may have been installed by the gang in an attempt to bust out the company, fits well, right, with the MGM purchase, but Apes got involved and now he's stuck between getting caught as an inside man for the Shill Hedge Funds and actually having to be a good CEO. I believe that he may be in self-preservation mode and has decided to jump to the winning team. Yeah, that's why he's so involved with the Apes all of a sudden. Uh, user Bruce Leroy Nuka says, wow, so many thoughts on this. Second, this lines up with Burry's tweet about boycotting Amazon and a couple others. It did not make sense before, but now it does. Was Amazon targeting GS to take it over? I wonder. Yes, they were. Burry's letter to GameStop. Probably nothing. Notice the color. Boston Consulting Group, former employee, wrote this article back in 2010, corroborating how useless and corrupt these consulting firms really are. We, re we returned... Vague case proposals, and by the time we were hired, nobody was the wiser as to why exactly we were there. Case proposals were deprised by the rank and file. One had a dozen bosses, unclear objectives, and virtually no coordination with the co-workers. Despite having no work or research experience outside of MIT, I was regularly advised, advertised to clients as an expert with seemingly years of topical experience relevant to the case. Clients usually didn't know why they had hired us. We returned vague case proposals, and by the time we were hired, no one was the wiser as why we were there. As consultings, our earnings came from having the luck of being included in an elaborate cargo cult ritual. <laughs> 
And as a matter of convenience, we elected to answer questions that we had already answered in the course of previous cases. No sense in doing new work when old work will do. So they just copy and pasted shit. Welcome to BCG. We help transition your company into bankruptcy. Byron Community Head of Loop Ring responded about the AMA. Cool. He's coming in. Uh, the effectiveness of this sub scares me, and it's so true. Like, this is kind of the craziest place for research I've ever found outside of Wall Street Bets pre-January of 2021. Because after January 2021, Wall Street Bets became a total shithole. Don't even go there anymore. At all. Neither should you. Uh, don't trust anything on that website anymore. Ethics complaint accuses Boston Consulting Group William Penn Foundation of violating the lobbying code. GameStop Twitter deleted their banner. It was just a period. You saw that. Now it's the Konami code. Konami code. Konami code. Whatever. This is the code you use to get 99 lives in Contra. Okay? You put it in right before the game starts. And it's pretty much the only way to beat that game. Think about it, dude. 99 lives? Does GameStop kind of have 99 lives? Eh, kind of, dude. Here's a web of con corruption. If you want to uh, screenshot this, go ahead. It's pretty impressive on how fucked up all this stuff is and my god i was talking fast but guys i this is the most bullish i've ever been still as we hit approach 200 again right back where we belong and soon the tinny man may come I've heard the fight's still on The short's not squeezed and the gain's not won A tendy man makes his regular call To encourage the captain, crew and all Soon may the tendy man come To send our rocket into the sun One day when the trading is done We'll take our gains and go Soon may the tendy man come To send our rocket into the sun One day when the trading is done We'll take our gains and go